Hello guys and welcome back to EFD. Today we've identified 10 managers who could be on their way to the very top. 10, Eddie Howe. Just 38 years old and already linked with the England and Arsenal jobs, it's been a meteoric rise for Eddie Howe. Except for relatively short stints with Portsmouth and Burnley, Howe has been at Bournemouth since 1994, first as a trainee, then as a player, now as a manager. Howe is undeniably a work in progress, but has taken the Cherries to three promotions across his two periods in charge at Dean Court, taking them from the fourth tier to the Premier League. Despite facing world-class talent on a weekly basis, Bournemouth have persisted with an attractive, possession-based game and have taken scouts from Manchester United and Chelsea. With a lack of quality, homegrown coaches in the Premier League, Howe is very promising indeed. For his sake, let's hope he never takes the England job. 9. Kike Setien No spring chicken at 58, Kike Setien is nonetheless just getting the recognition he so thoroughly deserves. The last Palmas manager who played under Luis Aragones, Atletico Madrid, once coached the Equatorial Guinea national team and took charge of Las Amarillos back in 2015 on their return to La Liga. A keen chess player, Kike shows that tactical nous on the field too, leading Las Palmas to an impressive 11th place finish back in 2015-16 and at one point taking the club to the top of the table for the first time in 38 years. And his love of what he calls nice football was encapsulated by Las Palmas' tie against Celta Vigo in October 2016. Despite having a monstrous 71% of the possession in the first half, Las Palmas actually went in at half-time 3-0 down. In the second half, they wrestled it back to 3-3, prompting a local newspaper to say, you want to kill them, but you can't help love them too. 8. Eitor Karanka Basque by birth, Eitor Karanka spent most of his playing days with Athletic Club in Bilbao, but also had a five-year stint at Real Madrid, where he won three Champions Leagues. Ooh. After retirement, he returned to the Merengues as a coach, learning his trade under the one and only Jose Mourinho. Karanka is actually still in his first job in management, having joined Middlesbrough back in 2013. The club had finished 16th in the Championship under Tony Mowbray, but harboured ambitions of returning to the Premier League. Karanka uses contacts to bring in lone stars like Patrick Bamford and Gaston Ramirez, finishing 12th, 4th and then 2nd. After seven years, Burrow returned to the Premier League. Karanka is contracted to the club to 2019, but on this form, we can't see him staying much longer. 7. Roger Smith Now, if you like the pressing football of Pep Guardiola, but ever find yourself wondering what that would look like, played by players on speed, Roger Schmidt's Leverkusen might be for you. The German joined Bayer from Red Bull Salzburg, where he won a league and cup double, maintaining an incredible win ratio of 69% in his two years in Austria. Leverkusen under Schmidt swarm forward, burying their opponents with hectic pressing before turning possession into shots at a terrifying rate. The manager has developed players like Karim Bellarabi, Hakan Chalanoglu and Julian Brandt, marshalling their talents into lightning quick, if slightly erratic, attackers. Like into Pochettino, Klopp and Bielsa, Schmidt is creative, intense and promising, much like his teams. 6. Eusebio Di Francesco Once an Italian international midfielder, Eusebio Di Francesco has been with Italian Mino Sassuolo since 2012. Under his guidance, the Nero Verdi won promotion to Serie A as Serie B champions, but Di Francesco was sacked the following January after his side faltered. Unbelievably, Di Francesco was reappointed as boss five weeks later, with results having failed to improve in his absence. Shock. And he kept the club in the division, earning himself a contract extension. The next year, they finished 12th before reaching the heights of 6th in 2015-16, pipping the mighty AC Milan and Lazio to a spot in the Europa League. And all this despite coaching a tiny club with a stadium that fits just 23,000 people. 5. Vincenzo Montea Still just 42, Milan boss Montea arrived at the club in 2016, fresh from a year hiatus, but made his name with Fiorentina. The Italian took over La Viola in 2012 and took a side which had finished 13th in the previous season to a fourth place finish, which he repeated in his second and third year with the team. A title winner in his playing days with Roma, Monteo implemented an attractive pattern move style in Florence, 
and was reportedly considered for the Barcelona job before it was given to Luis Enrique. And with the Rossonieri, the little aeroplane will have a chance to prove his credentials on the big stage. Milan have started brightly in the Monte Art, taking 19 points from their first nine games of the season, their best record since 08-09. And with youngsters like Donnarumma and Locatelli coming through, glory days could just be coming back to the San Siro. 4. Marcelino Marcelino took over Villarreal back in January 2013 after a poor spell at the helm of Sevilla. The club was stuck in the Spanish second division, but Marcelino lost just two out of the next 21 games, taking 45 points from 63 and returning the yellow submarine to the top fight at the first time of trying. Villarreal were expected to struggle, but the coach led them to two sixth place finishes before coming fourth in 2015-16. That's impressive. The side narrowly missed out on a place in the Europa League final to Klopp's Liverpool and conceded just 35 league goals, a record only bettered by Barca, Real and Atletico. Unfortunately, differences with the Villarreal board saw Marcelino quit in August 2016, days before the Champions League playoff against Monaco. Now unattached, we can't see him staying unemployed for too much longer. 3. Julian Nagelsmann Incredibly, at just 29 years old, Nagelsmann has been in charge of Bundesliga side Hoffenheim since February 2016, taking over from the rather more experienced Herb Stevens. Nagelsmann was a trainee player at Augsburg before injuries ended his days on the field, leading him to take up a coaching role under Thomas Tuchel. He switched to Hoffenheim in 2010, working his way up from the under-17s and earning the nickname Mini Mourinho. Nagelsmann is actually younger than his club captain, Eugene Polanski, but has nonetheless stamped his authority on the side, with Hoffenheim earning more points than every German side except Bayern and Dortmund since he became the boss. A fan of Barcelona and Arsenal, Nagelsmann's emphasis on attacking and pressing has lit up the Bundesliga. Expect big clubs to take notice very, very soon. 2. Thomas Tuchel it's easy to forget that Dortmund is only Thomas Tuchel's second management job. The Bavarians started at Mainz, joining the club after their promotion to the Bundesliga and guiding them to ninth in his first campaign, then fifth the year after. Always an innovator, Tuchel knew his team couldn't match up to Bayern and BVB, so he introduced systems that maximised the talent he had. Defenders were made to train with tennis balls in their hands so they couldn't pull on strikers' shirts, whilst training pitches were made diamond shapes so wingers would be more direct and avoid heading to the byline. In 2015, he took over a Dortmund side rocked by the departure of Klopp, and whilst they finished 10 points off of Champions Bayern, they were 18 points ahead of third place. The links to Manchester United and Real Madrid have started already, and it seems like just a matter of time. 1. Ralf Hosenhutl At number 1, it's Rasenball Sport Leipzig's coach, Ralf Hasenhutl. The fourth Bundesliga coach on our list, Leipzig recruited the Austrian from Ingolstadt after he brought the Bavarian club from the bottom of the second tier to 11th in the top flight in just under three seasons. Before that, Haas and Hudler prevented Arlen from being relegated from the third division in Germany in just half a season, then rebuilt the squad and gained promotion the following campaign. So, he was an obvious choice for a Leipzig side looking to develop their raft of youngsters and consolidate their place in the Bundesliga. It's early days for Haas and Hertel, but after 10 games with his new club, they're unbeaten with a 60% win ratio, level on points with Bayern Munich. There's a new super club on the rise in Europe, and with it, a new superstar coach. So there are 10 future managerial superstars. Have we missed anyone out, guys? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want to crack on with the FD, click here. And as ever, don't forget to like and subscribe.